The following is a short video explaining the Pahang study lesson to audience folks. The nutshell of this lesson is students exploring the Pahang community by locating and collecting and identifying rat and birds. They will also examine the creatures they found for their niche and the adaptations that they have to survive their watery environment. The backbone of this lesson are the objectives, and there are four. These objectives should be concentrated on throughout the lesson. The first, the students will be able to identify the members of the pond community. The second, describe why macroinvertebrates play an important role in minister living. Third, compare the adaptations of pond dwelling creatures to those of terrestrial organisms. And finally, the fourth is to define the term niche. The majority of the lesson will be taught at Minister Lake and we'll head there in the last half. Be sure when preparing for this lesson that you familiarize yourself with the creatures that the students will find. There are cards provided in the lesson plan that you can look over, and you can also check the Nature Navigator website. The common creatures that will be found in Minister Lake are dragonfly and damselfly nymphs, scuds, bat swimmers, caddisflies, and leeches. So make sure you know what they look like and all of their adaptations. Uh, from then on, we'll show you items in the kit that each group will have, and when we go out to the lake, we'll show you how to use them and tips for teaching this lesson to make this success. All the items needed for the pond study lesson can be found in this bin. Each group will receive two green plastic bins for collecting their microorganisms. They will receive two spoons, a magnifying box, and petri dishes along with identification cards describing each creature's adaptations to living in a pond. They will also receive the macroinvertebrate dichotomous key to help them key out the creatures they find, as well as a citizen monitoring poster. This poster will help them determine the group in which the creatures fall into. That will help them determine the health of the pond. Here we are at your collecting location, Minister Lake. Once you get the students down here, explain to them your expectations and show them how to properly use the equipment. Get them set up with one bucket full of clean water that they can put their creatures that they found in and another bucket ready for them for the muck that they find with their D-net. You'll want to show them the proper use of a D-net and I'll demonstrate that now. Take the D-net, stick it into the water, get it down to the bottom, shuffle it along, go up to plants and grass, try to get as much material in there as possible. Bring it over to the bucket. Try not to let the water drain on land for too long. Shake it in the bucket. And then you can set your D-net down. And here comes the important part of patience. Let the muck and dirt settle in the bucket. You'll start to see movement and that's where the students will start finding their creatures. They can use their spoon to search through and see what they can find. Once they've found something, have them place it in the empty bucket so they have a better chance of correctly identifying the creatures with the charts and cards that they have. Give them enough time to collect creatures with saving 15 minutes to wrap up, have them share what they found, identify the health of the pond, and return to those objectives, which were identifying the members of this pond community, describing why these macroinvertebrates are important in Minister Lake, Compare the adaptations that they've learned about these creatures to those on the terrestrial ecosystem side and define the role of niche. Once you've gone through that, bring that, this lesson back and relate it to them. What can we learn from these e ecosystems, these adaptations? How do we impact Minister Lake and how does Minister Lake impact us? And with that, you'll have a full, complete lesson, and hopefully the students will have some fun. So even in this small scoop, we have some awesome creatures to look at, including this tadpole. You put them in the clear water and watch them move. Explore the adaptations that a tadpole might have. There are also dragonflies, damselflies, and a bunch of other creatures here in this bucket. So plenty for the students to look at.